Hey everybody, Sevel here, and today we're going to be going over the Anthem Room and Try Hack Me, where we exploit a Windows machine. It is a beginner's level challenge, so if you're, you know, in the market to kind of skill up in the Windows exploitation, because if you're like me and uh, your Windows privilege escalation is kind of weak, or, you know, it could use some work, um, like, like anything else, you know, everything, you know, always constantly requires some type of work or practice, so... Um, if you're looking for that, this is definitely the box to do that on. It's really fun, um, pretty straightforward, and you know, if you if you're new to Windows exploitation or you still need to learn a few things, this will definitely help uh, with that as well. So, uh, without uh, ranting too much longer, I'm going to go ahead and hop right into it. Um, as you know, I've already deployed the machine, and I have completed uh, this entire box. I just left the final stage, which is just uh, grabbing the user and uh, root.txt files. However, we are going to go over the um, task one and task two and just go over how I achieve those answers. It's pretty straightforward. So let's go, ha go ahead and hop into task one, which is website analysis. So I'm going to go ahead and read this short description here and we should be good to go. So this task involves you paying attention to details and finding the key to the castle. This room is designed for beginners. However, everyone is welcome to try it out. Enjoy the anthem. In this room, you do not need to brute force any login pages, just your preferred browser and remote desktop. And then it goes on to tell us that uh, we just need to give it uh, a few minutes to boot up and configure. I have already gone to the site just to make sure it is up because I was having issues beforehand and I just wanted to make sure that it was all good. So um, the first question to task one is let's run nmap and check what ports are open. I'm going to run my standard, which is just nmap sc for default scripts, sc for enumerate all versions, and then I'm going to output that to an nmap directory that I created and call it openports.txt. I have already ran that, so we can just go ahead and cat that file out. And as you can see, we have uh, about five ports open, and it's, you know, nothing too crazy. HTTP uh, on, on its standard, port 80, we have some SMB, and then uh, RDP on 3389, which is its standard for Windows. So that will uh, segue in, that segue us into our first two questions. What is That is, what port is the uh, web server running on, and what port is um, remote desktop service running on? So that's pretty straightforward. We know that uh, HTTP is, in fact, our web server, so that's port 80, and then RDP is uh, going to be on 3389, and that is respective, respectively both of their standard ports, at least for Windows. Uh, well, not so much the web server, but for RDP. And we can move on to number four here, which is what is a possible password in one of the pages web crawlers checks for? So um, if you've, you know, if you just kind of look into maybe, I, don't, I, don't, I wonder if Web Fundamentals goes over that. Uh, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't know, but um, I'll have to look into that. Maybe I'll add like a little, um, a little, a little page there during this little part here. But nonetheless, if you know, it's it's pretty pretty basic as to what a web crawler is going to look for. It's going to look for what is allowed and not allowed, and that's gonna you're going to be able to find that in the robots.txt. And if we go there, obviously there's something that's a little non-standard, and that is the password or the string that's at the top. And you know, this is what you're what you'll usually see in a robots.txt it's never just going to have a string and if it does you know sometimes they try to obfuscate it by putting it in the comments of the um you know of the html code but um here we are we have umbraco is the best and that is a possible password that we found in a page that web crawlers look for so as you can see that is in fact the answer to number four moving on to number five is what cms is the website using and uh, that's pretty straightforward, deeming that the potential password is Umbraco is the best. And uh, just to preface before we go any further, I apologize if I am uh, pronouncing Umbraco incorrectly. I've heard uh, a thousand pronunciations and I just, you know, I'm just going to pick one today and we're just going to call it Umbraco. I apologize in advance. But, um, you know, just, you know, taking a pretty educated guess that Umbraco is in fact the CMS that they are using. Um, you could further kind of back up your claims by just going to the login page that they have here that is not allowed for crawlers to uh, to kind of, you know, brute force into. And once we go there, we are gifted with the beautiful login page of Umbraco. There it is. So that is pretty straightforward and answers our question number five, which leads us to question number six. What is the domain of the website? Well, that's pretty easy if we just actually go to the IP address we will see that the title of the uh, of this page here is anthem.com and um, well that's pretty straightforward so anthem.com is in fact the domain and that 
leads us to number seven, which is what's the name of the administrator? At this point, um, I just went through the, all the articles and I, I, I can't lie, I actually had to use the hint because I just did not know uh, what to look for. I tried viewing the page source and found a few things that um, I guess I wasn't supposed to find until the next, well, I know I was supposed to find until uh, the next task. And then I tried looking in the articles. The articles didn't really help much. If um, th this is the biggest article that you know, you know, uh, piqued my interest was because they're actually thanking the admin for redesigning the entire website. Well, the author is James uh, Hallowell. Hallowell. I hope I'm saying that right. Don't please don't uh, kill me for that one. I apologize. But um, that's definitely not him. And you know, if you go around, you can go to the other article. Um, the author is uh, Jane Doe, definitely not uh, that person either. So there's like no information on the administrator. I tried admin, I tried administrator, just, you know, the common, you know, the common names for an admin, and it just wasn't it. And then I finally looked at the hint, and it's something like um, resort to your oracle or, or, you know, some type of wording like that. And I don't know, at that point I was like, I'm just gonna start searching stuff. So I searched like anthem.com uh, administrator, Umbreco administrator, just in, just to see if it was maybe something that, you know, was uncommon. Um, I can't think of what else I searched until finally, I was just like, you know what, I'm just gonna search everything. And then we search this and I'm not, I don't read poems that much and I just didn't even know it. So if you read poems, maybe you will get this uh, like the snap of a finger and um, you'll, you know, You'll, you'll be cringed at the fact that I even said I didn't know who wrote this. And when you search it in Google, you can see that Solomon Grandi is in fact the author, which is also our administrator to this to this site. So that is in fact our answer to number seven, which is Solomon Grandi. And leading to the uh, last and final question of task one is, can we find the email address of the administrator? Well, we know that the administrator is in fact Solomon Grandi. And if you read the previous article, uh, the, the latest article on the anthem.com site, we know that uh, they're hiring and that we need to send uh, the CVs to JD at anthem.com. And we know that JD is actually Jane Doe. So it's just using the first, um, first and last initial of the name and then at anthem.com. So with that information, we can just assume that it is gonna be SG at anthem.com. And we know that to be correct, as you can see here. So pretty straightforward there. Um, that's just your basic recon and, you know, probably, you know, important part, especially as a beginner to kind of get the information you need to help you move on, uh, to the exploitation of the machine. So we can go on to task two, which is spot the flags. And this is actually, this is actually really cool. I've actually haven't done this on any boxes, uh, where I had to like go through page sources and stuff, but really fun. So it's asking us to find the, um, the flags here, I'm just gonna read this quick description. It says, our beloved admin left some flags behind that we were required to gather before we proceed to the next task. And we just, you know, try to find these flags. You could use the hints if you want, but honestly, it's pretty easy. You wouldn't need to. If we go to the uh, index page here, or the home page actually, so we just click anthem.com and we can um, view the page source and we can find a few flags here. So we find this one here, which is a uh, get good um, there's another one, that's one flag of course, and there is another one somewhere around here. Pretty sure we can just do uh, the find, and we can do THM, and we see that there's only one match. Okay, so maybe not in this one. Um, this just requires some clicking around and just, I actually accidentally found the first flag that we just went over by trying to find the administrator just to see if it was maybe left in some uh, comments or something on this on the source page and found that flag and didn't really know what it was needed for until I got to task two. Um, if we go to the author for Jane Doe, we find uh, laugh out loud who this, uh, that's one of, our, one of our other flags. I'm pretty sure there's a second flag in page source. Uh, there's a, I'm sure there's a meta, let's see, there's, here's four of, uh, nope, did the wrong thing. THM, so who's this, let's see, let's, let's get good. There are, there is, they're almost all in the page source here. Let's see, is it in here? There's a, another another meta, so there's one right there. There is one more. Let's see, there should only be two on this page, correct? We can exit out of that. Uh, 
dun, 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 dun. I'm pretty sure if it's not here, it is who uses meta. There it is right there. So th there's our four. Uh, you basically just have to kind of parse through the uh, articles and pages and just look through the page source to find the, um, the flags there. The way I did it was instead of just like trying to manually go through each and every line here of every page or, uh, you know, uh, the source page, I just used the, uh, you know, the find and just did THM because every flag is going to uh, begin with THM and then the flag. And of course, it'll find it for you. So that's just, you know, pretty easy, pretty straightforward. But I did I did kind of like that little task. It was really fun. And, uh, you know, I enjoyed it. So pretty straightforward. You find the four flags and you're and you're good there. Moving on to the final stage, which is task three. And this says, let's get into the box using the intel we gathered. Let's figure out the username and password to log into the box. Uh, the box is not on a domain. So uh, we know we have RDP open, so we can use, you know, whatever you use for RDP. I use Remina. So I'm going to go ahead and get that started real quick. And once we have that, we can go ahead and plug in some information with, on a new connection. We're just going to use the IP address of 1010. Oops. 1010197152. The username is going to be SG, um, similar to the email that we have, because we know that they're using first and last initial. And then the password is the uh, potential password that we found in uh, question number four. So we can just go back to robots.txt. And we know that this is a potential password here. And if you didn't, uh, if you didn't already, you could always go to the 1010197. You could go to Umbraco and test those credentials as well. So we could do uh, sg at anthem.com. Oops. And then the password from robots.txt, which is Umbraco, is the best. And that should log us in here. I'm, I won't wait for it. I'm just going to go ahead and go with Umbraco is the best. We're going to use the client resolution and we'll go ahead and connect. And we'll accept that certificate. And that should log us in here in just a moment. And as you can see, uh, Umbrego has you know validated the credentials, and we are um, on the control panel now, where we can do all of our administration administrator tasks if we needed to. And that also just kind of validates the credentials as well. Which I, one thing I didn't do was actually save those credentials to a file, which is always a good idea, just in case you need it in the future. So you could do um, a creds.txt file. And we know it's going to be SG uh, for RDP. We know it's SG and then the Umbraco is the best password. And then for Umbraco login, it's SG at anthem.com and the same password. Oops. And we can save that. So now we have some valid credentials. If we needed it, we can, you know, go back to that and, use as a resource. So now that we have RDP and it's open, we see that the user.txt flag is in fact just sitting here on the desktop as usual and as it should be. So we can just open that up. Um, the RDP on this is just a little slow, so bear with me here. We're going to close that CM or minimize that. And we see that uh, the flag for the user.txt is just newt newt. So we will go ahead and submit that flag. And we see that that is correct. And now it says, can we spot the admin password? So in order to find that, I actually, um, I try to go a little too above and beyond for this challenge. And I like uh, pulled over WinPs. I ran that, let it run for a good minute, and then began to um, just kind of go through that and look through like, they have like Amazon SSM agent on here. I didn't know if I needed to do something uh, for some type of exploitation on that. Um, I was looking for anything um, that, you know, could exploit the uh, server 2012, uh, 2019 standard eval. Uh, I just looked for almost everything other than what I should have. Um, and then I looked past what I was trying to find. So just to, be, just, you know, just to go through it, obviously, if you wanted to get WinPs over here, there's, there's obviously no internet, as you can see in this uh, bottom corner here, but there is PowerShell. So you could just use your PowerShell commands. You could do something like PowerShell dash C W get, um, obviously have a um, Python server running an H a simple HTTP server or HTTP server um, and just copy winps.exe or .bat over and then run that and you should be good to go. However, 
That's, uh, I don't actually don't know. I should probably go back and see if WinPs uh, finds what I'm looking for. But nonetheless, I was going through like programs files x86, and there was nothing you know uncommon about that. Um, I tried um, using CMD like to see what groups I was in uh, using like net local user or in this case uh, net user SG. I wasn't in anything crazy. I did see that I had like um, a traverse privilege. But that didn't really help because I didn't know what the file names were called or what the password file was called. So I couldn't, um, and I don't even know if that was exploitable. So didn't really help there, especially since the fact that, you know, the traverse um, privilege doesn't really help if you don't know what the file names are. So um, it took me a minute. And then I was like, you know, I wonder if there's something in program data. So, of course, you could go to view and then view hidden items. And then I was going through program data, finding all this stuff. And then I was just like, you know what? I'll just go back and just figure out what I need to go, go to through. I was going through everything from the bottom up, and I finally got the backup, but I didn't see to begin with when I originally uh, started to view the hidden items. And if you go into backup, you'll find that there's a single file. It's called restore. And if you try to open it, you will see that you do not have permission to open this file. So we can actually close that. We can go to properties. We can go to security and see that no groups or users have permission to access this object. And if we go to details, we see that we are in fact the owner. So this is the user that we are in, Solomon Grandi. That is the initials for Solomon Grandi. And we actually logged in as this user. So we have, uh, we are the owner of this of this uh, file here. So we should be able to make and change per, uh, permissions here. So what I did was I just added a group here. I'm just gonna do everyone. So everyone, everyone, I'm just gonna give full control and then uh, apply, hit okay, okay. And now I should be able to open up the restore file and find that the password is change me baby one more time. We can, uh, you can copy that and we can put that into, actually I don't think it's gonna copy from my, uh, from this from this page here, but no, no worries there. We can do a, uh, a new credential file for our administrator now so we can create that. We'll do uh, admin creds.txt and it'll be ad administrator and then change me baby one more time. So now we have administrator creds. We can clear that. And if you wanted to, you can just change user. You could switch users or, you know, you could just traverse to that site just from the file explorer here. And we can actually take that information and plug it into here since we have spotted the admin password. So change me baby one more time. And we see that that is in fact the admin password. And if we go into the uh, C drive users and try to go into the administrator drive, it's gonna ask us to authenticate, of course, see if we have permissions. So we'll hit continue. And we'll give that just a second. And we can enter the password. I don't know if I did that right. Let's just see. Yep. And that should authenticate us, allowing us to now go into the administrator folder. At its turtle like pace, I apologize again. And of course, like I said, you could always just, um, you know, you could switch users or you could start a new uh, RDP session and just log in as an administrator. But this is, I would say just as quick, I really don't know, but uh, this is, you know, just as, just as good anyways. We could go straight to the root.txt file on the desktop, uh, open that up and find that THM UR lead is in fact our final flag. And we could submit and we have completed the room. So we are good to go. That is in fact the entirety of the Anthem box. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you haven't already, definitely go try this box out. Um, if you're stuck on this box and you're using this as kind of a uh, kind of a guide or you know a write up or what have you, thank you for watching. Uh, you know, maybe tell me where you got stuck at, and maybe I could tell you what I do. And you know, when I'm stuck at a certain position or when I was stuck on this certain box at certain places, and you know what I used to kind of get me through to the next portion. So, uh, with that said. Hope you all have a great day, and I will catch you on the next video. Goodbye.